just left the 49ers locker room after that absolute statement of a win out here on this field, Everbank Stadium in Jacksonville. Trent Williams is really happy to be back. He told me that he felt a little rusty today. He wasn't sure how he was going to feel after being out for a month with the ankle injury. But if that's Trent Williams feeling rusty, just imagine how good this can be once he shakes off the rust. But he was thrilled. The 49ers are happy. I mean, this was a statement in all facets of play. It really, really was. This was what a Super Bowl contender should do coming off of a losing streak, coming off the bye week. And Jacksonville was possibly the hottest team in the league entering this game. Five straight wins, and the 49ers just embarrassed them. 34-3. to three. Offense, defense, special teams. I mentioned hell, even Mitch Wisnowski had the punt that pinned Jacksonville right down here on, on this end zone at the one-yard line. But Brock Purdy, I, I thought that he had one of the most telling quotes of the game. 49ers were record chasing for Christian McCaffrey at the end. They wanted Christian to score the touchdown so that he'd have touchdowns in 18 straight games, which would be sole possession of the NFL record. They couldn't quite get it. So the record dies at 17. McCaffrey co-owns it with Lenny Moore. He just didn't break the record. On the sideline, the 49ers were obviously disappointed, but Brock Purdy said that he went up to Christian McCaffrey and he told him, I know it hurts, man, but don't worry. We'll do it again. With a grin. And I don't think Brock Purdy was kidding is making Christian McCaffrey feel better about not getting this new record in sole possession because remember McCaffrey already has it so we can't say he doesn't have the record but I don't think Brock Purdy was kidding I think he thinks that he and Christian McCaffrey are going to run it back and you know how hard it is to score touchdowns in 17 consecutive NFL games first of all you have to be a all pro caliber talent like Christian McCaffrey obviously he is but on top of that you also have to have the quarterback and the offense and the system to score in that many consecutive games. So the 49ers have done it once, 17 straight for Christian McCaffrey, and they fully believe that they're going to be able to do this again moving forward. And based on what we saw on the field today, I wouldn't doubt them. Birdie, 296 yards. He will most likely surpass both Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes for the top spot in QBR. Purdy is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. It's indisputable at this point. The throw that he made to George Kittle with the line in his lap, possibly blind, anticipatory to allow Kittle to get around Devin Lloyd, the linebacker down the sideline, 66 yards. That was one for the books. That was an MVP level throw. The throw that Purdy made for the first touchdown to Brandon Ayuk, that one was funnier, more controversial, because Kyle Shanahan said that it was one of the worst decisions that Brock Purdy has made as a 49er, but he loved the result. And I thought that Purdy, despite the fact that you probably shouldn't be throwing across your body like he did on that play, I thought that he put that ball exactly where it had to be for Brandon Ayuk to catch it. So you do have to give Purdy some credit on that one. But in general, the 49ers offensive line was really struggling against a really damn good Jaguars defense. This was a road game against the number three defense in the league where Brock Purdy did not make a single mistake outside of the touchdown pass, right? If you're one mistake, according to Kyle Shanahan, is the touchdown pass that gives the 49ers a lead that they did not relinquish, then I think that qualifies as a really good day. He was dicing them up on the intermediates. He was accurate on the screen passes. Purdy was making decisions late in the read progression. You saw that on the touchdown to Kyle Juszczyk later in the game, and that was the one where the 49ers felt bad after Juszczyk scored because they realized, oh boy, we might have cost Christian McCaffrey a shot at the touchdown. They forced Christian back into the game after that, but if there was a truly le legitimate shot where he was going to score, it was on the Juszczyk touchdown, which was an amazing third, fourth read from Brock Purdy. As he rolled out, he waited for his progressions to clear, and the one that was open ended up being his fullback, Kyle Juszczyk. There was more after this for the 49ers. You got to talk about their defense. I mean, from the perspective of this team's complimentary football, the defense, I think, fueled what the 49ers did today. They lined up in that five-man front, and I talked to Chase Young about this. I talked to Javon Kinlaw about this. I have uh, listened to what Nick Bosa said at his press conference. It was crowded in the locker room, and I 
they didn't get around to everybody, but the 49ers intentionally wanted to set a tone with the five-man front on the first play of the game. They might have used the five-man front once or twice more in the remainder of the game, but the, the goal was to get Jacksonville afraid of running, to dissuade them from running on first down, because the 49ers have been a bad run defense so far this year. The a top two run defense over the past two seasons had turned into the number 26 run defense entering this game. So they said, enough is enough. We're going to send out an extra defensive lineman. We are going to force them to check out of a run play. And it's unclear if Trevor Lawrence checked out of the run play on the first snap of the game, but they didn't run. I don't know if they had a run call, but they passed, and the 49ers' goal was to get Jacksonville into second and 10. And they did. And once it was second and 10, it, it, that's it, epitomized what we've been saying for so long. Stop the run and have some fun. They stopped the run and they had a lot of fun on the back end. The only cracks in this defense today were on the screen passes on what? The fourth drive from Jacksonville. That's something that the 49ers are going to have to go back to the drawing board and fix because today it was the only way to move the ball against this defense. Javon Hargrave, Chase Young, Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, all these guys just monsters rushing the passer. So you neutralize it with the screen game. But as soon as the 49ers get in a little bit better position on the back end, they're not going to have these issues. They, they ran into similar problems in 2019. There was a game against Arizona on Halloween night where they struggled against screen passes, but they got it fixed. So you have to feel they're going to get it fixed. I mean, they already made so many adjustments today, starting with the five-man front to finally stop the run and set the table for everything else, to better defensive alignment in the coverage behind that. I mean, Fred Warner was so well aligned today. I thought Greenlaw was well aligned. Charverius Ward made a huge pass breakup of Christian Kirk. And then obviously the nickelback adjustment. Ambry Thomas came into the game to allow Diamond Lenore to play against Christian Kirk. And then there was zone coverage late in the third quarter. Jacksonville was driving. And as that was happening, Ambry Thomas had Christian Kirk in zone coverage. If it was, if, if it had been man coverage, you'd see Diamond Lenore on Christian Kirk. But it was zone, so Ambry Thomas, the 49ers' newly used DB, had to match up against the hot receiver in this game. Christian Kirk had just come off a big catch that got the Jacksonville Jaguars really close to scoring on end zone right behind me. And Ambry Thomas. So Sean Gibson told him, hey, keep it wide. Keep this zone wide because Christian Kirk is probably going to run that out toward the sideline. And Ambry Thomas stayed nice and wide, followed his technique, trusted the elder statesman to Sean Gibson, and then made a form tackle and stripped the ball away. Good defenses forced takeaways. And, you know, Jacksonville's a really good defense. 18 takeaways lead the NFL. The 49ers had four takeaways today, no giveaways on their part. And the 49ers now have 17 takeaways. So, they're one away from taking the NFL lead. And one of the one of the takeaways was one of the most entertaining plays that you'll see. It was Ambry Thomas on the strip, and then he recovered the football, and then he ran all the way back. But unfortunately, D. Winters and Jair Brown thought the play was dead, so they ran out onto the field. And guess who else ran out onto the field? Kyle Shanahan. So the 49ers got issued the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, but they scored anyway, moving down the field. I believe that set up the George Kittle touchdown deep. So. Ambry Thomas deserved a touchdown on that play. He unfortunately didn't get one, but it was still symbolic of the adjustments the 49ers made. In the big picture, they just went on the road here to the Eastern time zone into Jacksonville's house. There's the Jacksonville logo. And the 49ers held the Jaguars to no touchdowns, to three points. And the 49ers offense was awesome on the ground, awesome through the air. The special teams was good. This was a statement win from a Super Bowl favorite, the 49ers are now six and three. So that's what the locker room was all about. Hopefully I gave you some good intel. Trent Williams is very happy. So were the rest of the 49ers.